2015 conference building a global village that is the theme with which we are going vigyan university is going for the first international and interdisciplinary conference last year in the month of november we are conducting the dst sponsored conference on chemistry and that is also national conference and last month uh, mathematical society andhra pradesh mathematical society conference we are conducting i feel immense pleasure to be associated with this international interdisciplinary conference on language literature cultural studies and knowledge resources this type of interdisciplinary conference is the need of the hour our english team and library team they took initiation they started working on this and uh, i must congratulate the uh, both the teams our library team and uh, the language team for taking lot of pains and uh, taking initiation for this conference as the registrar of this deemed university in guntur it is my proud privilege once again to welcome you wholeheartedly for this first ever international conference on intercultural dialogue and the theme of the topic is building a global village and i don't find any topic which is much global i mean in size in topic in substance in scope then your topic you your wholesale i mean topic announcing encompassing language literature culture and knowledge resources and being a vice chairman of the technical university even though i prefer to sit on the other side of the dais as the vice chancellor has mentioned uh, madam sarda has uh, forced me to stand here and uh, say a few words it's what teachers do all of the time as a teacher one to one with your students you are making assessments of where they are and where they need to be as a learner for the students you are testing yourself you are looking at what you have learned and what you need to learn so testing can be really exciting language literature and cultural studies uh cultural studies and knowledge resources is very timely and appropriate as it complements and supports global dialogue pedagogy and pedagogy that is aimed at greater global awareness and international citizenship how to build a global village with the uh, knowledge resources so a global village uh, the term was introduced the concept was introduced by the marshes macluhan marshes macluhan and uh, Quentin uh, Pierre in 1968 in their work War and Peace in the Global Village wish the conference great success on behalf of uh, a national association of english teachers called eltai english language teachers association of india and we have a guntu chapter which is uh, co-sponsoring uh, co-organizing this uh, conference lot of research takes place and research journals are there and we think that so all this knowledge is easily available to all the people who are interested so by again this could be controlled by the use of patents and other means and actually research that is oriented towards uh, um uh, you know very important things is never shared by people it is secret so the topic is chosen very well and this topic is very interesting and very challenging building a global village through intercultural dialogue and knowledge resources in relation and interaction between language and literature and how it shapes the cultural ethos of human society the aim of this uh, whole seminar is building a global village because of its truly interdisciplinary character i am sure we'll have lot of uh, uh, ideas and views uh, being exchanged back and forth and so on and uh, i mean of, uh, on my part i'll just uh, you know thought i'll say a few words about the relationship between language and literature we need to explore whether it has that space for social political 
and emotional emancipation. That's what we aim to do. I mean, as student of humanities, we make this fine distinction between concept and reality. Life is a concept, but how you live your life is a reality. Uh, on behalf of the Institute for Cross-Cultural Studies and Academic Exchange, I would like to thank the administrators and uh, Dr. Uh, Shoshi Khan Kiran and her colleagues. And I'm so, so proud of you students. And I want everybody to give a special hand for these students. All the distinguished uh, scholars from different parts of the world who are here on both sides of the dais. It's my great privilege and honor uh, to take part uh, in this uh, mega event uh, that is so uh, nicely organized. You have brought uh, distinguished minds uh, from different corners of the world and they have, been, they have been asked to address a very important theme, building a global village and addressing uh, the topic of language, literature, cultural studies and knowledge resources. Um, I very much look forward to the uh, panel sessions and the other presentations from which uh, we all hope to learn a great deal. An inbuilt system of the language, if it's English is a native language, then all the grammatical systems of English with fundamental repertoire of vocabulary has been built into the human mind, the child's mind, and with that the child is able to interact in the language with adults and with other children. Anyway, for that, metadata. Now in Google, can you search, I want publications of Ranganathan from 1940 to 60. Can you get that? You give Ranganathan 60, 1940, 1960. Wherever 1940 is there, 60 in between gone first. It doesn't distinguish Ranganathan if it is there, it puts out. Uchi Ranganathan, we do not know. Whether he, he, he was a politician Raghunathan or library science Raghunathan, it doesn't. Okay. Of course, metadata can include many things. Okay. There could be metadata about Vignan University or about an individual or Professor Sudarshan Rao. Print journals versus print journals by healthcare professionals in GSML Medical College and the TLRs, Vignanas, Dental Sciences. Works. You can have pictures. What I'm saying is for complex items of vocabulary, do you think it is possible to have pictures? That's difficult. Okay. I would like to present on Jaisri Mistra's novels. And my topic is Version of Women in Jaisri Mistra's Novels. Mistra is an expert in changing genres and calls commercial fiction as her natural home. And uh, the most important thing in call is uh, recently introduced as a CAPT. Uh, CAPT seems to be effective uh, improving pronunciation accuracy. And as well as uh, how much uh, that means uh, the, the gap between word to word or the gap between sentence to sentence or the gap between uh, paragraph to paragraph. As human beings we depend on language just like we depend on air and water. And today when we talk about communication, Today in the present era, what comes to our mind is the technology and media and uh, the innovative practices which we can actually practice in a classroom using these uh, technological tools and media tools and all that. My classroom, come on to chatting room every day in the evening when I respond to the daily surprise to And the next day when I go back to my class, they want to We talked about two things in this particular paper. The first thing I'll be talking about is what the year exploration of women's side. That individuals have to a certain time. Uh, her phonological gives you 
understand the concept of immortality? Previously, we used to talk about IT, information technology, but now everybody speaks it's a busy world green technology. Women are uh, seen as second rate citizens. They are not seen as intellectuals. Uh, women are always in a lower position, either in leadership or in other activities. So, myself and other colleagues, women, started asking questions about male domination. And in those days, that means in 78, 79, 1978, 79, even the word male domination is very uh, derogatory. So what I found uh, mo very interesting in those stories, there is a theme that is connected with the uh, seminar topic. Design means whatever, even when women were studying, whatever their fathers wanted them to study, they studied. And they were mostly shaped by the aspirations of uh, the male members. So, uh, women writers strove to retrieve subject status to women through several strategies. These are briefly making women central figures in fiction, giving prominence to women's voices, locating narration within women's consciousness. And other thing is you can be committed to the truth. You know, you see. All artists are committed to the truth. You know, you see. Women writers, male writers, I mean whoever you know, you see, have embarked on writing with some sense of commitment. You know, you see. Truth is important. But the truth as you see it, you know, you see, relative to your own time and space. You see. This is what I always think, you know, and my favorite example is always someone like Shakespeare, for example, you know, who wrote some of the greatest works in uh, literary history of any language. You know, I mean, he lived under an extremely repressive era, and he responded to that repression. I have my boss, my superordinates ordering me. I have my children to command me, to tell even as employee, this is how you want, you need to dress, this is how you need to go out, this is how you need to be with others. My husband definitely is there. <laughs> what kind of progress did we make? That's a real question. And I've been wondering, really, did we give any kind of freedom to my girls? At least to my girls, after I'm educated, I'm a doctorate, I keep working, I'm at a university, I give good education to my girls. My daughter's lives did not change much. My eldest one, now today, husband educated, very well settled family. She does the home work, taking care of the husband, runs again to IT sector. 8 to 8, sometimes 8 to 10. What kind of change did it bring in her life at least? The next generation. Technically equipped generation. Uh, I have some uh, theoretical answer that uh, uh, feminism always values housework and rearing of children very valuable and men also should share in the housework and child rearing and society has a responsibility to give women or women and men to rear their children and to work around their homes. Patanjali, the author of the Yoga Sutras and Descartes, um, the author of Meditations on First Philosophy both are very famous um, thinkers, and both of them are um, people who um, emphasized something called substance dualism. So substance dualism is the idea that there is a spiritual self uh, um, uh, or a, you know, an immaterial self, and then there is the material world, and that they are separate. And Many of you will have heard of the terms summative assessment 
and formative assessment. And I'd like to unpack those and then let's see how that, those concepts fit into this new concept of learning oriented assessment. For the researchers, there's some issues that come out of the literature you may be interested in. And then I'll go through a cycle that is being proposed for how learning oriented assessment can work. So it's an individual learning program for even a nine-year-old to learn a language. And there are lots of things out there that do that. In an institutional sense, if you have a course that you hope everybody will complete, you can then also get individual information about each of your students. And the theory of universals, which too will be mainly derived, uh, though again drawing upon many different uh, traditions, but mainly derived from the Indian and the Hindu philosophical tradition as the foundation, metaphysical foundation, for uh, language, literature, uh, cultural studies, and knowledge sources. So um, that's, that's the plan, and then I'll see <laughs> how much of that is, is, is accomplished. Um, in focusing on cultural studies and literature, this, um, this, my paper aims to highlight strategies. So in the second part of my presentation, I am going to introduce um, uh, a, um, a course that I developed uh, based on women's literature that incorporates cultural studies um, to globalize our students. So if there are 10 pages in the newspaper, only uh, yeah, Three, four pages, good number of, a good amount of space is allotted for the business. World over, this is happening. And uh, yes, the impact of it is, the languages are also reduced to a business level and in the name of functional language, as simple as that. Yes, we are not teaching or we are not uh, bothering, we are not at all uh, considering that, uh, yes, we should teach or we, the students should learn uh, more than the business language, more than the functional language. That is the whole problem. In the process, in this, during this transition period, what has happened? The language should tell you, this is how we, the, the differentiation comes from a robot and uh, the human being. Robot can also speak, but it, it speaks without feeling. It speaks without an emotion. It speaks without uh, 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 some, uh, any kind of, uh, uh, psychological element. Yes, that is what uh, we are trying to do it. We are teaching them and they are learning of it and we are very much satisfied all over the, especially all over the country. Uh, I can't uh, comment all over the world, but that is that must be happening. One year is equal to 365 days. It is a cycle. So, because all these are related to time, all are cycles. Now, I will explain the seven Kala Chakras. You will understand the superiority of Vedic knowledge. To understand this, we must have the picture of creation. That is our universe. That is the book I have written. That is creation of science and published. This is the comment on that book. First, you please have this picture. Creation took place in three stages. Our universe is, or where we are living is, solar system. This is the third stage of creation. This solar system is present in visible universe. That is the second stage of creation. 